you left your hand this morning? How did you like the snowfall? Yeah. Is it the story that you shared with Nicole? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, I mean, she's shared, but I'm like, man. Um, it's one of those, like, you want to see the good in it and pour out your heart and say, hey. Um, but you also have to consider long term. And yeah, so that's a tricky one. Hopefully it got a little better with your daughter. Test it out, Aroni, and see if it gets the go ahead to the right test. All righty. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we stand? Amen. Uh, this morning, God bless every single one of you, those on the live stream as well. Amen. We welcome you out. We're going to sing a couple of songs, and we're going to sing that song, Making War in the Heavenlies. Amen. Let's give glory to God and sing together. Um, the family should be walking in. Don't worry about them. Uh, they'll settle in in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. name amen let's go to the next song there is no rock like our god here we go there is no rock like our
like our God. Man, there is no rock. And there is no rock like our God. There is no rock like our God. Precious cornerstone. salvation for Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we slow it down? God bless you. Everyone again, uh, we're bowing our heads. Amen. Why don't we lift our hands as well as a sign of surrender to God, our love unfailing. Here we go. Son of God, and 
our heads. God bless you all. And as we go before always the throne of Jesus, I did get a text from Yolanda again thanking uh, every single one of us for our prayers and uh, support during this time. I'll give more information on the, uh, the funeral dates and times and locations. Uh, we we want to continue to lift up Yolanda, uh, Caesar, Elias as well, all the extended family, anyone who has traveled I uh, do want to use this as an opportunity to preach the gospel and to share uh, the faith of Jesus Christ, amen, for the salvation and the re uh, remission of our sins, amen. So let's pray for them as well. Continue to pray for my aunt uh, Ana Montes back in El Paso, B Benjamin Montes, the father, and uh, my extended family as well uh, during this time. Still hurt and pain. I got to communicate with my aunt. She's still overwhelmed with grief, amen. That is normal, but I am uh, praying that God would strengthen her foundation and that she would overcome all that is happening here. For even David said himself, he said, look, I pray to see if the Lord would spare my child. And he has chosen. The Bible says that he put on, he washed himself, placed his, his uh, tunic on. He said, I need to go to the house of God and worship. Amen. So, amen. Nothing wrong with interceding and praying. But we do want to pray that she would uh, use this as an opportunity to get closer to Jesus Christ. And also uh, praying for my cousins, Ray and Alexis. Uh, that they would use this as well to grow strong in the faith. Amen. So let's lift up our brothers and sisters who are currently out of town. We're going to pray for uh, the Hansard family, uh, Jackie, Aaliyah, Gia. Uh, they're out in uh, California having a great time. Amen. But just pray for them as well for safety, travel, and protection as they are in that state. Uh, we also want to lift up the Ayala family who will be leaving Monday morning to El Paso, uh, taking the Amtrak to uh, Albuquerque, and then a four-hour drive, four-and-a-half-hour drive to El Paso. So let's pray for God's traveling grace for the entire family, uh, that he would protect them and also use the conference as an opportunity to get stirred for the gospel. Amen. It's not a free vacation. It is an opportunity to see everything that the churches are doing and also get inspired so that we can do something radical for Jesus Christ. Amen. Peggy Salazar lifting her up. Jamie's cousin, Teresa, Danny Lauder, always praying for Janet Tish and J uh, Jim uh, for God's provision and help uh, during these times. Landon for Crohn's disease, Megan and James Martinez, Juanita Ortiz as well. We're going to lift up Mario Ayala, brother. We're praying for you. I don't know if you're tuning in anymore, but for your sciatic nerves, praying for Benny as well. Uh, Barry Munkle, the Andrus family, Tari. And we are praying for Frank and Cherie Dominguez that are in Missouri. Amen. So why don't we just uh, bow our heads together. We're going to go before the throne of Jesus. The Bible says to make your requests known to God. Amen. And that's what we're doing here today. We're using this as a place and a sanctuary, a tabernacle of God's presence. And we're going to cry out to him in Jesus' name as a body. Father, we thank you to, uh, this morning. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we're asking that your spirit be among us, God. We pray for all those that we love this morning, those that are grieving, those that are mourning, those that are hurting, our sister Yolanda and Caesar as well. We pray for the grace of God, God, that you would be their providence, that you would be their guide, Father, their comfort and strength during this very difficult time. And I thank you that the strength that they have already displayed, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon their life as they have proven to be faithful in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for my Aunt uh, Anna and my cousins, Ray and Alexis, Father, extended family, that they would just be strong in Jesus, uh, that they would not let go of our Savior, that one day we shall see all those that we love again, that they, their foundation be Jesus Christ. We pray for the church body that is here today and those that aren't present. Uh, Father, that you would begin to build upon this church. Send the right people into the house of God that we may build an administration, uh, that we may be a powerful work for Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray, Father God, for couples, single people, Father God, and all those who would respond to the the message of the gospel that would not just come here to play religious games God but to be a part of something greater than ourselves and that is spreading the good news of the gospel and making disciples so we're asking you to fill the service God the God that you would give us discernment uh, guidance God deflecting all evil all impulses of the flesh to be cast out uh, but let us be vessels of honor here today to praise the name of Jesus Christ we give you all the praise all the glory in Jesus mighty name and we all said Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to just take time, small church today. Let's greet one another and we'll have a seat shortly.
Praise God. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. Um, anyone interested in going to the conference this is your last chance. Amen. And at that point, we won't have anyone in here. <laughs> I'll be preaching to uh, the family like we did in Cudahy. I think it took uh, a couple months, amen, to get our first visitor in there. So it was just preaching to the family, amen. But do keep, uh, keep praying for them. Um, I thought they would come this morning, the Ayala family, amen. But just pray for them, traveling grace. Uh, I don't like trains, amen. So they're going to do the long way. Uh, oh, it wasn't Monday. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I thought I, I saw the ticket that was... Driving tomorrow, but they land and they drive and they don't stop for two days. Okay, so I looked at the... She sent me the tickets as well. I'm like, how are they going to do Monday and then get there Monday night for the service? Anyway, but just keep them uh, in prayer as well. Uh, we do want to pray uh, for the, the lineup. Uh, they're probably too small to see there, so Pastor Paul uh, Stevens will be kicking off Monday night. Amen. I'll give you the link for that. Hoping that we could tune into all of it. I know that uh, some of us have, if we have work or anything else, they're going to have the morning seminar starting Tuesday at 9 a.m. They take a break for midday and then they come back at 7 p.m. as we always do. Amen. So uh, just pray for that uh, on all the pastors that are preparing uh, for that as well. And we want to lift up uh, Bobby and Carrie in Jesus' name as well. So if you heard, there was a persecution out in Israel. Anyone heard about that? So. They made it clear, obviously, this is a particular push from a type of Jewish people. They don't want any other religion in there. And they were saying if anyone preaches the gospel or Christianity, especially targeting Christianity, you can get up to a year in jail. If you witness to anyone 18 or younger, you could go in there for two years. Amen. So that was just the highlight that was out in the news. So we were thinking, I'm like, how's Pastor Bobby going to do this? But uh, with confirmation, uh, with all that is happening over there, that is just like us it's like the LGBT community saying they don't want Christian churches anymore. They don't have the right to do that. They can make it public. They can make it on the news all they want. But because of our Constitution and the Bill of Rights, it's, it's going to have to go through certain uh, things before it could even happen. So we do want to pray for that because that is just showing as well that there is an antichrist spirit even in the nation of Israel. But God's plan and purpose is to redeem that nation. He says, I will save Israel. I will put them back into my plan and God will do that with his grace and glory, amen. So we just want to pray uh, for that as well, and then believe God for all that he has uh, in the church of Jesus Christ, amen. So with that said, we would like to take an offering this morning uh, and give to the kingdom of God. We obviously know as we live in, in pressing times, it's not an easy time to live in. We were at uh, uh, the Cermak up on First Street. Anyone go there? Good, nice, nice grocery store there as well. And uh, as you're starting to see the price increase, now this shouldn't scare us, but I was telling my wife that when we were looking there, we used to buy, I don't know how to pronounce it, Worcestershire sauce. Amen. We were going to do some grilling out. And she's like, well, why don't you get the Worcestershire sauce? And I'm going over there. I remember the price of, th of the sauce. And so go over there and it's two twenty nine. dollars we used to buy the, the, I think it's one pint for 118 and previous to that, you can get the generic brand for 89 cents. Well, they want 229 for it. Now, a dollar doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're adding groceries, all those pennies start to add. I'm completely amazed as far as where the economy is going that you're paying double the price for a sauce to put on your steak. But nonetheless, beloved Damon, we're to have faith in Jesus. Amen. Continue to give. Amen. The widow at Zarephath gave the very last of her flour and dough to the prophet Elijah for the purpose of healing and restoration. And, you know, if uh, we've read this text before, what's interesting is he nearly commanded her. He said, feed me first. And the widow of Zarephath said, hold on, my son is about to die. Can I at least bake him one more cake? Now, for mothers, if you understand that, if your son is passing away, let's say he loves a nice, fresh, baked strawberry cake with strawberry frosting on it. Amen. You would do anything to feed your son his favorite cake. And that was the right thing to do. But the prophet Elijah challenged the widow at Zarephath and said, feed me first. Amen. In other words, give to God what belongs to him. And without even knowing, the Bible says that the child died. Elisha came back. What, and the question is, would things have changed if she would have reversed? Would things have changed if she said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and bake him the cake. 
A lot of people can complain as far as when the offering comes in desperate times. But I want to remind you of the God that we serve, amen, because he is the God of impossibility. I know that when times seem short and, you know, our budgets are being cut, expendable money is not there, vacations are limited, right? We got to settle for the bottom of the barrel of things, beloved. Have faith in Jesus, trust in him during these times, and he has always provided, he is always able to do so as we have faith in him. And I want us to bow our heads as we're giving. I'm going to pray a blessing over the tithes and the offerings that are here today. And have faith in Jesus, beloved. What would you do in a circumstance like that? If the prophet approached you, you know you only have a certain amount of the bank account. He says, give it to the kingdom of God. What would he do? And let's say here today, maybe it was to pay your utility bill. But God says, hey, give to the ministry of God. I will take care of the rest. That's a very challenging thing, even for me. Because I would say, hey, we got to pay that electric bill. The widow of Zarephath gave faithfully. The miracle was performed. The son was saved and brought back to life from death to life. Amen. A wonderful example, amen, of putting God first. And many times as well, we have sacrificed for the kingdom of God. Let this be a sacrifice unto the Lord. Said, God, I don't know where this economy is headed, but I trust in the heavenly economy, one that cannot uh, be tarnished, one that cannot fade, cannot perish, as uh, the apostle Peter had said. Father, we thank you here today. And in these pressing times, Father God, let our hearts be challenged to trust in the only provision that you have given us to be saved. That is Christ, our Lord, our Savior. And though finances can dwindle, they're here. Sometimes they're here and sometimes they go. But Father, we trust you above even the dollar bill. The whole world can collapse, but as long as we have our Lord and Savior, we are grateful. And I'm asking for wisdom upon, on, on the behalf of the church. Let us be wise in our spending, but also let us not forget of the gift of God, amen, and to bless his kingdom first. The Bible declares uh, that we are to put the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and all things will be added unto us. We believe that here today. We thank you. We bless your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. God bless you. Offering basket will go around. I want us to turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 25. Amen. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 25. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm entitling this one, Generation of Evil Over the Good. And I don't have, I, didn't, I usually put my um, sermon title up here. I didn't have enough time to put that one this morning. Amen. I try to get creative uh, with that. But out of your Bibles, Luke 24, turn your Bibles there. And I'm talking about a generation of evil rising over the good. Amen. There's a great concern of the rise and the popularity of evil. Has anyone noticed it today? Amen. When you look out at the world, beloved, things are beginning to change rapidly. Something that we may have considered to be innocent or, you know, minuscule that is just kind of at the bottom of the surface of things, whether it be uh, immoral practices, sexual practices are rising up to the surface. They're being evident to all, beloved. They have opened up Pandora's box uh, and Satan is making his presence known more than ever before in our country. Can you say amen? I mean, look abroad, beloved, the things that are being enacted before uh, the face of even believers. Can I tell you that there is t there's a time for war? Amen. Now, I'm not calling for a rise of arms or physical, uh, a, a physical fight against uh, the principalities that are in front of us. Uh, I'm not talking about getting angry at your neighbor because of the evil that they are practicing. I am not even saying go up to the homosexual and condemn them for their, their lustfulness uh, and sensuality, beloved. Amen. But there is a time in the Bible where Christians begin to rise up and oppose the things that are happening within this generation. Can you say amen? Hallelujah, beloved, we have got to make a stand. There is an age of passivity happening. I'm tired of people saying, beloved, that we have to just take it as it is, amen, that we are to be passive with all the sin that has happened. You're a Christian, turn the other cheek. Uh, beloved, there is a time biblically in which we stand against the evil practices of this world. For it is said, even in Ecclesiastes, there is a time for war and there is a time for peace. There's a time to search for things and there is a time to count things a loss. Uh, what we are seeing in the world. And time and time again, we've seen it through many generations, that people are agreeing with the wickedness of this world. Where they are condemning the good people and imprisoning them, spiritually speaking, and they are applauding the wickedness that is rising up 
in this world. We're living in a generation in which, again, that you can claim to be whatever it is you want. You will get a trophy for it, regardless if you are right or wrong. And they will condemn anyone who is good or says that it's not right. And I'm not asking for a physical contact battle, but rather that we begin to fight with wisdom, with strength, with courage, and with God's guidance through the Holy Spirit. Here's a a quote here from Ronald Reagan. It says, evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. Amen. Here's another quote from a martyr who died at the hands of Nazis, who was martyred for the faith. He was a German pastor, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Amen. I don't know how you say that, but it says, silence in the face of evil is evil itself. Amen. Amen. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. He was martyred because he refused to be silent. In the presence of the Nazi regime that was taking over the land, influencing, they were starting to begin to look at the Israelites as the infection. And a lot of times they told them as they were taking them out into these concentration camps, uh, they would begin to tell them that there was a solution for their problem. They convinced the entire German nation again to come against the people of God. Isn't that interesting? Through rhetoric and propaganda, by beginning to influence what was good was really bad. And what was bad can be actually good. This is the generation that we live in, beloved, where good is seen as evil, evil is seen as good. Let's read our text to find out the nature of this in Luke chapter 24. And the Bible reads in verse 13, Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for his charges against him. So Jesus is being tried. Verse 15 says, neither has Herod, For he has sent him back to us. So the king couldn't find him of any rebellion or inciting a riot. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him, flog him, right? And then release him. Verse 17 says, for it was necessary for him to release one of them at the feast. But the whole crowd shouted, away with this man, release Barabbas to us. And Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. So this was valid proof for Barabbas. Verse 20 says, wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Wanting to release Jesus, uh, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And for the third time, he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. and Therefore, I will have him punished and then released. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified. And their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demands and he released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. And the one they asked for And surrender Jesus to their will. Let us bow our heads together. Amen. You can see the crookedness in what is happening here in the hearts of those who would rather release a criminal than the Son of God himself. Father, we thank you here today, God, as we establish your presence. And before the people of God, amen, those on the live stream as well, we send blessing towards them and here in this place. And God, as we are seeing a dying generation, amen, we're seeing the influx of wickedness and evil and the applauding of crazy sins, an age of sensuality and lustfulness of the heart, O God. But I pray that here today, Father, we would keep our hearts right in tune with the Spirit. Let us not be deceived, for even the news itself is a wizard before the people confusing the minds and allowing us to fall into a delusion that good can be evil and evil can be good. I'm praying for your protection over our hearts and our minds and our spirits to keep our family strong, even in our own homes, God, that we would make a stand for the cause of Jesus Christ. For there is a time for peace, but there is also a time for war. And we are going to call these sins out for what they are. For even Paul said himself that we are to expose every wicked deed that is hidden in darkness and bring it out to the light. 
Father, let us not agree with sins, but rather help people to come out of such wicked sins. Give us the strength to do so, the words, and empower us here today. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And we said, Amen. You see, the biblical origins of God and laws were given to God's people for the purpose of keeping order. Amen? When we look at the country that we live in, one of the greatest nations in the world, we were once known again for the governing of laws, but at the same time giving liberties to people. And just because this nation is known for its great liberties, there are consequences for disobeying the law. How many can agree with that? Even though we live in a great nation, it doesn't mean that you have the right uh, to, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, if, you don't feel like you, uh, if you don't feel that you like someone, you can't take their life in the name of freedom, abortion, amen. And you can't justify that without the penalty of the law that keeps boundaries and orders for the nation that we live in. One of the attributes and the notable evidences of his presence of if evil in this world is rebellion. How many rebels we got in the house tonight? Amen. I raised my hand as well. Amen. We came from a lifestyle of rebellion, of iniquity before God. We intentionally defied the king. We were out in sinning, uh, intentionally knowing that the things that we uh, were doing could have possibly landed us in jail. Can I just tell you what one of my nights were like? Every time we started drinking, the first thing that popped into my mind, and which was the Spirit of God says, if you drink, you drive, you lose. But in my heart, I said, hey, I'm going to supersede the law. I can take the risk here today. And though I had the right to do those things, the, the presence of the consequence itself always stirred my mind. Can I tell you how I was living life? I mean, I don't know how people live like this anymore. But every time I got behind the wheel, every time I was drinking, every time I was doing a drug was the possibility, will I get caught today? This is how we know that we have a conscience, beloved, that something bears witness to our hearts saying that is wrong with what you're doing. How many remember the nights that you would go out uh, and something told you that you are wrong for doing those things? Every time we went out to the clubs uh, or to the venues of bars and we were out saying, who's the lucky woman tonight? Uh, there was something that said, this is wrong, Vince. Uh, don't pursue it. Uh, and yet I defied the law. I defied in rebellion and I did the things that I thought were right. In this generation, beloved, we're seeing a swapping of things. How many know what I'm talking about? Good is evil, evil is good. Do what you want. One of the laws that uh, Aliaster Crowley, who was a satanic witch, uh, who went to a very low degree to find power, he said in his very words, the greatest law in Satanism is do what thy wilt. Do whatever you want. You are a God in your own eyes. As long as you're happy, that's your law. Well, let me tell you in 1 Samuel 15, 23, the Bible says for rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. I want you to just soak that in for a little bit. So the prophet is declaring here to be a rebel is like actually committing witchcraft, like practicing of divination. To be a rebel, in other words, you are under the curse that operates witchcraft. And this is why when we see rebellion, we have to question what is behind the thrust of people that are out committing rebellion. Beloved, according to the word of God, it is the spirit of witchcraft. It is divination that has hatred towards God, has hatred towards uh, the spirit of, of, the, of, of Jesus Christ that is upon the world, and it opposes everything. And the Bible says it is in the same category as witchcraft. When you find a rebel, when you find a person who can't come in agreement or wants to change the laws of God, you know, the, the one thing we say is it is the spirit of witchcraft. The divination that, has ha that literally has a person underneath a spell. And throughout the Old Testament, the reason God instituted laws to govern and guide his people was to show that it would be a distinction from rebellion. Can you say amen? God is telling us here tonight, amen. He says the reason for laws is so that we can distinguish or differentiate between evil and good. And therefore, we agree here tonight, amen, that the laws of God are good. For the psalmist said himself, Lord, I love your law. Let me live by your law and for your spirit that lives within me. But what do we see in our nation? 
I mean, you don't have to look very far. I was driving to pick up a lady from Fox Point, very wealthy lady. She wanted a time out in Highland Park. Amen. And we were, as I was driving there, this car zooms by me. I'm going, I'm going a little over the speed limit. Amen. I'm a law-abiding citizen, but I was still going a little over the speed limit. And this car just whoo, passes right by me. And afterwards, you hear, whoo, 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 whoo. and I'm like, okay, he flagged the guy down. He just caught him. The guy needs to stop and pull over. No, beloved, it was a pursuit. The guy was going north. We were passing uh, uh, the Locust exit going north. I was headed to Fox Point, and I see about a 15, 16-year-old black American there, and he's looking back, and he's trying to decide which way he's going to go. I'm like, bro, just pull over. There is a law enforcer giving you a lawful command. That siren means what? Pull over. But you could see with his head and the gestures he was making, he says, I'm going to get out of this one. Zoom right by. I'm trying to follow them. Everything in me was like, hit the gas and try to hit them, but I had to stay back. But as I'm driving along, he exit Capitol, probably going 80 on that curve and turn. They went out to Port Washington Road, lost them from there. I don't know what happened. I tried to search the news that day. I'm just thinking, what a rebel. I mean, this guy has never probably submitted to any law, not even the, probably the laws that were given by his own father, if he had one. Search the news that day as I was sitting out in Highland Park. I looked, couldn't find the story, and I'm like, hopefully nobody was hurt, right? And then one of the articles says, Amazon, Amazon, uh, you know the buses that drop off your Amazon boxes, right? Amazon bus stolen by two teenagers in the north side. More rebellion. And I'm thinking, I, it, it, something's wrong in society. Because laws are made to govern us. And laws were made to also be enforced as well. And I'm thinking, what has gone into the minds of our youth uh, to go ahead and say, there is no law. I'm a law into myself, like Eliaster Crowley, a satanic witch that they don't even know that they're under this spell, who said, do what thy will. Do whatever you want. Do what pleases you. And the more and more this is pushed, beloved, the more and more that they find leeway, get slapped by the wrist by the government, they're out the next day. You see, a thriving, functioning society cannot exist without laws. Amen? Law is, is, the, is the bond of society, that which makes it, that which preserves it, and that which keeps it together. It is, in fact, the essence of a civil society. How many have read the Old Testament, what they would do with criminals? <laughs> you know, it was not a slap in the wrist. There was no such thing as probation. Go help out a community service. Go sweep the church. Find something to do. You're going to learn by this mistake. You know, you, sometimes you'll find them out on the hills of the expressway picking up papers and all the trash uh, for community service so that they can give back to the community. Beloved, there was no such thing according to the Bible, according to the Word of God, capital punishment. And though it may seem cruel and unfair in the days that we are living in today, this was a normal thing for society to keep order. Amen? This is what they would do. But I'm amazed of how many criminals in our country just get the slap on the wrist. Now, I'm not condoning for just punishment for everybody because I deserve to be punished. Amen. I deserve the, the very, the very uh, 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 a bolt, light boltening from God to have destroyed me in my wickedness. I thank him for his mercy. But what we're seeing out here is increasing wickedness. I mean, it's crazy. Just recently, there was a brawl in a mall brawl in San Francisco. Anyone hear about that? People at the mall just throwing blows. They're fighting. There's all kinds of chaos. Well, the CNN liberal media, major news network, was out there, and they're out there in a liberal city. And all of a sudden, the reporter says, "Our windows got bashed in. They broke everything. Stole some of the equipment that was there while they had security." I mean, this is where we live. Where no longer a young individual respects the man with a badge or a security that's trying to ward them away. Get out of here. Don't mess with us and whatnot. They were able to do it in the face of law enforcement and security there. They bashed the windows. The CNN reporter says, hey, that's what it's like to live in a, in a, in a city. Get used to it. Be tough. That's chaos. You don't deal with those things. Law, the law should condemn those things. Thank God that the security was able to take the license plate picture. I'm like, wow, good job. As the car went away, they don't care about that. Good is evil, evil is good. 
Deuteronomy 17, 6 through 7. Let me just show you a tidbit of the example of the Old Testament. On the testimony of two or three witnesses, right? In other words, we have to confirm this evil practice. Can't just be by one, but it has to be two or three people that say, I saw him steal the Amazon van. A person is to be put to death, capital punishment. But no one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness, right? All the husbands would be dead. And verse 7 says, the hands of the witness must be the first in putting that person to death. And then the hands of all the people. You must purge the evil from among you. Very tough statement. Which is, by the way, the word of God. God had to teach his people to come out from the pagan society that they were in. And he says, if we're going to start a nation and bring forth the seed of the Christ, of the Messiah himself, we cannot be governed by laws of pagan societies. Amen. So he says, in, in order to do this, I'm going to give you new laws to live above. You're going to be dis able to distinguish the presence of Satan and rebellion and I will be able to distinguish my people by law-abiding people. And for those who actively choose or forcibly choose to commit evil, it shows that there's rebellion in their heart. God had, didn't have time to deal with it. He says they must be put to death. I mean, if you look at all the laws, keep reading Deuteronomy. I mean, it would take out a child who said they, they, were, they were completely in rebellion. If you slept with your neighbor's wife, you, there is no chance. You couldn't even make it on Jerry Springer. You were going to be put to death at that very moment. And this shows the nature of God. He's saying, I hate sin. There shouldn't be defilement in my people. My people should learn to be righteous and holy above reproach, uh, doing the things that I have commanded. And though I thank God that capital punishment was put to death. Can you say amen? Because we all be dead. God still reserves a day of judgment in which he says, what you saw in the Old Testament is still my nature today. I will put to death those who were in rebellion. I hear some people say, right, when they get involved with the criminal system, especially for minorities, right? They say, the system is not fair for minorities. Hey, Amen. I got a word for you. Stop getting involved with the system, Right? It's like they, they want to be commended for fair punishment by the crimes that they committed. So they'll say, you know, in, in a small phrase, it's the system is not fair for minority peoples. And I say, it's very simple. My friend, amen, stay away from the system. Be a good person. Can you say amen? Live according to the law. Respect people. Don't steal what is not yours. And you will not get involved in what you say is a corrupt system. In fact, I have to say something to hear. I actually thank God for our justice system. Because it is to ward people off for punishment for the sins that they commit. For the crimes that they, and they should be heavy. Because even that, uh, there's people that will complain. Well, I don't like child support because they don't let me live. You should have thought about it before you acted. Amen. Well, it's just not fair. How is a man supposed to be a living, make a living? Well, you should have really considered, do I want to have a family? And those are set in place for a reason to scare you to say, stay out of the system. Do what is right. I thank God for our justice system. I thank God for the laws even in our country. I think they are very good. The problem is that the people behind them that are enacting them the way they think is right. And you'd complain that it's not fair. Go to another country. You'll say it's fair. Oh, we have it easy here in America, right? I mean, we got away. I mean, we just knocked some guy over the head in New York City. He collapsed and died. And, well, we just get a ticket. I mean, you can go to some of these places and commit an obvious evil crime. And because they don't want no bond or anything, they say, well, you'll get a ticket. We'll see you possibly in court in two months. And the criminal says, ha, piece of cake. The hatred for God was in full manifestation with Jesus as he stood there, an innocent man. Amen? I got a picture here. The hatred of God in full manifestation. 
And I want you to think of this here. Here's Barabbas, the insurrectionist, the real insurrectionist. And here's the one who said incited an insurrection. I know we all think of January 6th, of the in, what they called the insurrection, the most, the most evil day in American history where they try to overthrow democracy. Beloved, but the, the news is finally coming out that it was actually the feds who were in on it trying to incite things. So I say, oh, how about a fake insurrection and the one who is actually inciting violence? Barabbas was known for murdering people. He was an atrocious killer, someone that you wouldn't want next to your kids. Amen. He was a violent criminal, again, that had no mercy, no remorse for taking a person's life and actually would go in the cities. You would call him mentally ill to disturb people and make people afraid of him. But because of the rebellion in the hearts of God's people, the true one who should be crucified was God himself. Can I tell you something? Since the day of creation, God's creation himself, human beings, if had an opportunity, we would crucify the God of glory again, says the Bible. If Jesus came once again, and we will come again, the Bible says that we actually want one more shot to, to destroy the Son of God, showing the rebellion, showing the hatred for his laws, and the concern for even salvation. And yet it was in full manifestation in the day. This is a, a picture, beloved, that we have to understand. I mean, I saw this picture, and I said, okay, well, they're just choosing Barabbas. Beloved, God is showing us through his text that this is the nature of those who hate me. Verse 18 says, but the whole crowd shouted, away with this man, meaning Jesus, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection, an actual insurrection in the city and for murder. So they're saying again, kill the son of God. Pontius Pilate said himself what? We have no basis to even condemn this. We've taken him to King Herod. They can't find any cause. We'll flog him if you want. But this man is not worth killing. But I'll give you a choice. We can release Barabbas as we do as a thing that we do every year to show, uh, uh, to show unity with the Israelites, to show that we are good people. Have your choice here today, an evil criminal insurrectionist murder that you would not have your kids near, or the Son of God who says is the King of the Jews. And what did they pick? Kill the Son of God. And this is a reflection of what is in the human heart, beloved. There before man stood a life-giving Savior. Okay, I want you to look at him again. I know it's just an image. But before them stood the life-giving Savior who would give up his life for the forgiveness of sin. Seen as a murderer, seen as an evil man, an insurrectionist. All he did was heal people. Amen. All he did was tell the truth in the synagogues. All he said that they were in rebellion to come back to the love of the Father. You guys are doing things wrong. Stop with your evil ways. Stop with your wickedness. And yet given an opportunity for mankind, they said, give us God. We'll kill him himself. We'd rather choose a criminal who would not be safe around our children. Release him, we'll deal with Barabbas, kill the Son of God, was the mentality. There's a modern day atheist that I recently saw a debate with. Uh, he, he debated a man named Jeff Durbin, who's an apologist. And within that debate, I'm watching it, I love to listen to debates, and he's debating him now. The atheist comes up and says, Your God has done nothing for society. People are suffering because this so-called God that you believe in. And he came before the people and said, you know, what is God? God is science. God is giving people prosthetic legs. God, our God, the God of science, is actually helping people with their vision. You, can, you see where I'm going with this. We're actually doing things to change society with future and technology and all kinds of discoveries. Where is your God when people are dying? Where is your God? And you can see that it seems like a valid point. To, but, beloved, they don't know the God of the Bible. Can you say amen? And so he's trying to stir the emotion of the crowd during this debate, saying that your God has done nothing for his people. We are gods. We are changing things. And I just had to step up, take a step back. I said, there is judgment reserved for this man. 
Everything inside me is wanting to hate this individual, but I said, God, to you be the glory, for he shall answer one day. I pray that you soften his heart for the things that, that he is saying. I worry for our current generation. Amen? This is why I'm preaching. I'm concerned. Though I have faith in God. I know before we we're going to pop out another baby, you know, my mother was saying, please, Vince, no, no more kids. <laughs> right? I mean, we look at it, it's like, if this is what's happening now, what's going to happen in 20 years? If we still have a nation. No more kids. Yeah, you know, we got to have faith and have more babies. Amen. But it's a legitimate concern because I am actually concerned for this generation. Evil beyond belief. I believe now we have crossed that threshold. Beloved, if you can sense it yourself and you error an uh, evil that has come as we have crossed that threshold that is inviting all types of sensualities and sin as they continue to say, kill the good guys, release the evil one. Condemn everyone that hates uh, the LGBT community. Condemn the Bible, beloved. One day, I say this, amen, by the Spirit of God, this could be illegal one day, amen. There can be a time in which we will no longer be able to gather and assemble, and it could be near where they see, the, where they see this as defamation, where they see this, again, as something that is evil, that it is not up to code or the standards. But I'm telling you, beloved, we have got to be careful with what is happening in the world because they are willing to crucify the good for the sake of the evil. They're willing to release Barabbas in another sense and crucify the people of God. And it started, I mean, think about the law that was passed when Barack Obama was, I'm going on a rant, amen. I mean, remember the day the White House was lit up in a colored flag, the administration that says no marriages between a man and a woman, only months later, they told the American people, you can find it during the debates when uh, President Obama was elected, he says, no marriages between a man and a woman. Uh, and they said this, Joe Biden himself. Uh, but lo and behold, on June, which is now Pride Month, uh, they get a whole month again to do all their obscenities. And they said, matrimony is now between same sex as well. And it opened up Pandora's box. Let me just say something. Marriage is a biblical concept. It's found in the Bible, the book of Genesis. It is not something to be adopted just for your own pleasure. It was a union between, we know, Adam and Eve. The two shall become one flesh. It is a biblical concept. What these LGBTQ communities are doing is adopting the worldview of Christians and applying it to their own life, not knowing that it is a biblical practice that is spread throughout the whole world as a testament that God has made man and woman. Not Adam and Steve. Amen but man and a woman. But since Obama passed this law, beloved, it opened up Pandora's box. Did you see the pattern that they have? And see, they were arguing, we want same-sex marriage. We want rights. So they gave them the rights. And now look at where we are today. Think about the things that have opened because of that. And I'm not just targeting evil on this community. Amen. But gay marriage led to then what? Gay people wanting to go to a Christian store purposely I mean, a Christian ba a bakery to get a cake of two men. Why can't you go anywhere else? Because it was a target. It was to start propaganda and get the ball rolling. And once they could uh, got their gay marriage, then they could do lawsuits. Uh, now they wanted to do all these things. Then they said, we want acronyms. We want LGBTQI. Then came the right to, to be minorly attracted to little people. I mean, this is happening before our very eyes. Evil is good, good is evil. If you see anything wrong with that, beloved, you will be attacked. You have no tolerance while they're intolerant themselves. You need to accept, but they won't accept our gospel. I understand if they want to do their own things, beloved, amen, but that, you know they should be equal and fair. Then came drag shows. How many have heard about that? I know if, if you're not watching the news, thank God. Drag shows in front of little kids. This is real stuff. Where a drag queen, a man dressed as a woman, is dancing like they are at a strip club in front of little kids. And that is normal. That is not normal, beloved. That is evil appearing to be good. 
conditioning the minds of people to say this is the new norm. Can I tell you what? If your mother took a 15-year-old to a brothel, she would be questioned, her child would be taken away, and there would be some real, uh, there would be some real uh, civil things happening to that individual for doing such a thing. But a drag show is okay. God forbid parents taking people to a strip club, amen, that, that would be condemned immediately, but a drag show is fine. Then we have George Floyd, I know, okay? Let me just say something before I get in trouble. Though he unlawfully died, and no one should die in the hands of a police officer who is there to defend and protect, Okay? So I'm not agreeing with what happened to him, but this man was a dra drug addict, a lawbreaker. He punched a pregnant woman in the stomach. Okay? No one's telling you about that. Now he is commemorated. He has statues, I call them idols, that have been placed upon to remember him, but they will not condemn anything. I mean, literally, this guy, he's got statues everywhere. People go visit as a monument. You got BLM in the top. Here's the George Floyd face. Black Lives Matter. Solidar I will not give solidarity to anyone but Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? I pay no loyalty to no one but my Lord and Savior. Amen? Someone once gave us a solidarity fist. Take your solidarity fist. I don't want it. My loyalty is to Jesus Christ. Amen? Not some organization that was a complete fraud. And they commemorated this thug. Now, I'm not excusing the fact that he died in the hands of a police officer. No one, no one, who's done, no one who is a drug addict should die from a cop unlawfully. Okay? Let me just put it before I get in trouble here uh, uh, this morning. Amen. But he was a criminal and a thug. And what did the world do when he passed away? George Floyd lifted him up. Criminals out in Minnesota were being bailed out for the protest by Kamala Harris, who was funding these things, okay? During that, all that time, funding, ch channeling money to get those people who were arrested unlawfully for peacefully protesting while they were tearing and burning things down. Oh, but we had an insurrection January 9th. And they were bailing them out, saying, release the criminals. Anyone who comes against the criminals is evil. And so people would condemn. These people were arsonists. They were burning buildings down. They were burning federal buildings out in Oregon. But they would commemorate them, applaud them. People were donating. Your celebrities, beloved, if you are in love with celebrities, you need to watch out. Your celebrities were donating to these things to get the criminals out. And I'm saying the days of Jesus are here. Where the criminal gets released, regardless of murder and insurrection, but kill the innocent one choke them out. Well, God wasn't too happy with George Floyd because if you can see here, again, they had a little crown over him. George Floyd mural struck by lightning crumbles to the ground. There is no king but Jesus Christ. Completely annihilated the day after it was built. They put the surroundings on it. Call it coincidence, but a lightning bolt came the next day. Pow! Says there is only room but one king, but our king Jesus Christ. And yet people paid tribute and, and, and they paid honor in the name of George Floyd, who, if you look at his criminal history, was not an innocent boy. And I will say it one more time. He did not deserve to die in the hands of a cop. But I will say they were lifting up glorifying thugs, drug addicts, and a person who punched a woman pregnant in the stomach who lost her child. This is the generation that we're living in. Mankind and society and through the world needs heart surgery. Beloved, we need our hearts changed. When you look at a person who's, who's I mean, in rage and in anger, right? They got red and blue hair. You look at them and they, they say, you need to have tolerance, but they don't have tolerance themselves. You need to start, stop targeting our community, but they will bash on Christianity. 
And I say the times of Jesus have come where good is evil and evil is good. And this is what we are seeing again, a portrayal of Barabbas and Jesus Christ. Have we lost all our senses? Evil is manifesting. And the people will say uh, that love is not love uh, and th th that now they're falling into lust. Uh, you see the signs out on your, in front of the lawns that says love is love. Anyone can love and this right and that right. Beloved, this is all the same thing manifesting in a different package in 20 and 23 where the lust and the appetites of people are starting to de destruct uh, our communities. They're beginning to uh, destruct all the things and the laws that are happening in this world. It's no reason that you go out to California. I mean, it's just chaos. We care about the homelessness there, and you go there, tent city everywhere. Human feces on the ground, people doing things in public in broad daylight that should be done in closed rooms. And they say, we care for the people. Beloved, uh, it's like the U.S. is going down in the toilet. A love for evil. Matthew 24 and verse 12. Let us turn there. Let me get the scripture out here. Matthew 24 and verse 12. It says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. And this was the Olivet Discourse that was given through Jesus as he preached about the last days. He said, because of the increase of wickedness. We've always seen wickedness happening. Thousands of years. But he says, there's going to be an obvious increase of wickedness and the love of most will grow cold. Isaiah 50, 20, it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, and who put darkness for light and lightness for dark, light for dark, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And what he's saying is there's going to be a great exchange in these last days where good is evil and evil is good. Beyond the norm, beyond what we can comprehend. And we're starting to see this now more than ever before. This whole movement of acceptance, which was masqueraded to appear good, is a distinguishing sign that Jesus is ready to return. This whole agenda that we need to accept, you know, trans people and respect what they want, right? Right? It's like join in in their mental illness and just tell them that they are what they are. No, that's mental illness. They need to hear what they, they need help, number one, amen. And they need to be told the truth, not given further into their delusion, making us fools also by saying, yeah, you are a she, but really, no, we're not playing that game. There's an individual who got a person uh, upset, Michael Knowles. He's a very uh, famous YouTuber as well who comes against this. He's a Catholic, but I'll tell you what, that Catholic's on fire for Jesus, amen, because he comes against these things as he interviewed this individual. And as she's telling him, you need, to, you need to do the pronouns, you need to do all this and accept and accept. And he said, I want you to know me as a very powerful, strong Christian. So every time you refer me, I want you to say powerful Christian, man of God. She said, I will not call you that. There's no balance. He says, I will not call you a great, powerful man of God. But that's my pronoun, man of God. I want you to say that. And she said, I refuse to do that. In the same breath saying, you have to call me these things. Beloved, that's a delusion. We are now in that generation, as I said, we're swapping good for evil and evil for good. Our approach must change. And sometimes it takes a serrated knife to do the job. You know, when I cut, cut my hand, thank God it was a nice fine blade. Because <laughs> when it went through, it did a nice cut, <laughs> just straight in the hand. No jaggedness. It wouldn't have teeth that you cut a steak with. This one just hit my, it hit my palm and it just a nice perfect line. I remember when I got it sewn, I was gushing blood everywhere. I can see my ligaments and tendons that were there almost hit a nerve. They said you would have lost mobility. Thank God it was a straight edge because it cut perfectly. I remember as they were sewing it, I'm like, man, that's a perfect cut. So they were able to stitch it. You, you can barely even tell. There's some people with a jagged cut. When they stitch it together, it looks very bad. Well, beloved, sometimes we've got to use a serrated knife, amen, to deal with the things that are happening here. Because friendliness ain't going to cut it. Amen? 
I'm not trying to be mean here tonight, but I am telling you this. We're going to have to come against the evil of this world by telling the truth. Not being a mean person, not calling someone, you know, a, a homosexual or the F word, right? Not, none of that, amen. But we're going to come to a time, beloved, where we have to rise up and say enough is enough. The age of passivity is gone. We're going to preach this gospel. We must tell the truth uh, that people are out in sin and God is angry. He is ready to judge the world. And unless they change their hearts, uh, unless they change with Jesus Christ, they will perish. Paul got upset with some people that were teaching a different doctrine. They were saying they must be circumcised. And Paul's like, if you get circumcised, you have made the power of the gospel to no effect. And he got so upset with them that he even used some harsh words. He says, why don't you, and if you look, you can look at it in Galatians chapter 2. He says, I don't have the text up here. She says, well, you know what? Why don't you use a serrated knife and just castrate yourself instead? Because what, you, what you're doing is not of God. Salvation in Jesus alone. And he gave them words that you wouldn't put in a, at the family table during Thanksgiving. He said, at this point, you, should, you might as well castrate yourself if you think that circumcision is going to save you. And this is what we call using the serrated knife when we have to come against some things and say, you know what? You are wrong. That is complete wickedness and evil. You are in rebellion, governed by the spirit of witchcraft. And unless God saved you, there is no hope for your life. Beloved, we need a heart change. I'm going to read one more in Ezekiel 36, 25. And it says, I will sprinkle, I will sprinkle clean water on you. Thank you, Lord. And you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities, from all of your idols, all your ways of living, right? I will give you a new heart and put, in, put a new spirit in you. Thank you, Lord. I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. As we're closing tonight, this morning, afternoon, sorry. Beloved, our only hope is Jesus, amen, for the remission of our sins. The only one that can put us back into a state of understanding on the good path is our Lord, amen, who has come to convict the world of sin. Just before I got saved, I, I remember having a conversation with my mother. I just want to show you where my mind was. And I remember Barack Obama, I mean, we were always voting blue, right? As a, as a Latino, you got to vote blue. And I remember being there with my red hair on the side of my head, hair sweep to the side and super tight pants and a rock and roll. I look like Nikki, Nikki Six, right from that band. And we're like, well, we got to decide who we're going to vote for. And the, the, the topic again was about abortion, killing babies. And I said, well, if you can't afford them, then might as well get rid of them. And I remember us agreeing, well, yeah, it's it better, better for, rather than putting them into a society in poverty and in and, and, and bad circumstances, bad upbringing, no parents loving them, neglected there, I think it's better to exterminate them. And I was in agreement with that. I was those chanting with Barabbas, release Barabbas. My mindset was crooked and corrupt. I look back and I kind of giggle at him like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I was pro killing babies. I was pro allowing men and women to be promiscuous, not being responsible. Ah, just get rid of the baby. Keep doing the deed. Beloved, my mind was corrupt and evil. There are some things, beloved, I won't even mention over the pulpit of my mindset because I was one shouting again, release Barabbas. I want more sin, more sin into our communities. And that's what he represents a criminal that would be released back into the society to begin to roll the ball with more corruption. I said, yes, kill the babies because if we can't afford them, I mean, I mean we still got to have fun. We still got to be sensual. There's still relationship, girlfriend and boyfriend outside of marriage. I mean, we want to do the deed, but we just can't have the baby. My mindset was like that. Today, I think I would be one of those in... Portland, Oregon at Chaz chanting, no more government. We want social programs. We want uh, socialism, not knowing that it still takes a governing body to function socialism while we receive free programs and all of those things. I would have been one of those with red hair. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I would probably be Antifa. <laughs> but that's where my mind was. But what it took was the love of Jesus Christ for him to say, I'm going to put a new heart in you. Amen? I'm going to give you a new spirit. And I thank God for that, beloved, because my eyes are open. And he can do that for you today. Maybe on the live stream. You are rebel by nature. And God, with his grace, wants to open your heart. Give you a new heart and a new spirit so that you can understand right from wrong and follow the Lord of glory. He can do that for you in Jesus' name. I want us to bow our heads here in this place this afternoon, amen, in the presence of Jesus. Beloved, our world is changing. The world is changing before our eyes. And many will say, well, it's always been, there's always been bad in the world. Yeah, but Jesus promised increase of wickedness. Pastor says he's never seen some of the things that are being passed in law, even in his generation. The hippie generation, love and peace. He said, never did we think that there were going to be offering things for transitioning and castration and all kinds of altering things to the body because people hate their bodies. Can I tell you what transgenderism is? They hate the creator who created them. That's what it is in a nutshell. They can't accept that a perfect God in heaven created them as a male or a female. And they said, I hate God so much that I would change who I am. That's what, that's what it is. It is rebellion of the heart, beloved. It's saying, God, you made creation, but it's not perfect. I'm going to make it perfect. And they will castrate themselves, change themselves into the image in which God had not created for them. That is rebellion, beloved. But in this place, my prayer is, I know we got a small body this morning, but that, beloved, amen, you take the gospel. Don't feed into the lies. Amen. Sometimes it takes turning the, the news off. Amen. I call them the modern-day wizards. They're tricking people with delusions and spells, causing them to a downward decay that spirals out of control. Before they know it, they're believing the lies. The only one we can trust is Jesus. Amen. And in this place, before we leave, amen, maybe you're in rebellion Beloved, you need to live, give your life to Jesus. Life is not guaranteed. It is short. You can perish at any moment, beloved. But your rebellion in your heart to, is distancing you away further from Christ. And God in his mercy is here today. He says, I will give you a new spirit and a new heart. I've removed the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is what we need, beloved. This is what saved my life almost 12 years ago. I look back at my friends somewhere in the grave and I said, God, how did you do this? How did you change a man? How did you take away these passions? How did you change my decision on what I see of what is happening in our, in our country, even politics itself? Beloved, some people don't like to mix politics with religion. Well, I'm sorry because Jesus came against the politics of the time. Politics are very involved as far as Christians are concerned. And he changed my heart in Jesus' name. Maybe that's you. You want to give your life to Jesus here today. I believe we're saved, but that's you, amen. Here's an opportunity to raise your hand if you're on the live stream. Beloved, you need to repent, amen. Trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior and cast off that rebellion, amen. Tell him uh, this afternoon, God, I don't want to be a rebel no more. I want to see what good is. I want to discern what evil is. Cleanse my heart, change my ways, and you will be cleansed in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Why don't we stand? Let's come forward uh, this morning, amen. A generation of evil and wickedness. Uh, that is coming over the people of God even. But God, uh, with his spirit, as we're coming forward, my word is to tell you here today, amen, that God will prevail in all of this. God will be shown strong, amen. He will vindicate his servants in these last days. And though it may seem that we are on the defense and losing this battle, the Lord would tell us even here today that his arm is not short, that he cannot overcome the circumstances of this world. And though it seems that we may be losing the battle, Jesus is preparing a body of people, a remnant of believers who will stand their gap, to stand in the gap, to lift up their voice as a trumpet, to be a herald unto the world, to say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Father, I pray for your grace here today. Amen, that you would help us here today. I know this was a different message, but what you placed within my heart, Father God, we have got to build up a fight against what is happening in this world. And what I speak of is not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle that was taught in this church that we must wage war in the heavenly realms to begin to, to, to change what is happening on earth. Father, give us the strength. Give us the words in Jesus' name. 
to overcome this battle of evil. Let us know, God, that though we are a small body, we can be effective for Jesus Christ. For God has always used a remnant, which is a small group of select people that would not compromise their faith, that would stand against all wickedness and evil, and God always showed himself strong in the smallest of bodies. Therefore, edify the church, those on the live stream as well. Let us unite and link arms together to fight against the wickedness and, and this evil. Father, we need your strength. We need Jesus, who is our source, our provider. He is our providence and our strength. And we're here today, Father God, that you would help us to open up our eyes, to see what wickedness truly is. God, let us feel your heartbeat. God, we want to be sensitive to what you're sensitive to. And what you have great concern, we want to have great concern for there. For this is the gospel, that only through Jesus Christ can a man be saved. And if a man be saved, his heart surely shall be changed, says God. For the true, the, the true fruit of their tree will show. And every man will be known by the fruit of his tree. Father, let us be those who serve. Give us the grace that we need and the provision we need in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Let's praise God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Wonderful Savior, we praise you. We thank you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, in this place this afternoon. Amen. God bless you. I know this it wasn't an easy message, amen, but, beloved, we would be foolish to say that our world is not changing. So I'm calling us, amen, to a spiritual strength and just to notice what is happening. Beloved, love your enemies, amen, but there comes a time where we got to use that serrated knife and say, you know what, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Jesus is the only one that can help you. We, if we may have a theological difference, and your perception may be different than mine, but my Lord saves. I know people that have been saved. I know my life has been saved. And I will not agree with the wickedness of this age, amen. And that's who God is looking for. We'll stand in the, in the thick of the battle and to be that voice, amen. Let's bow our heads today, this morning. Amen, I'll prom I promise I'll be a little easy tonight. Amen, God bless you all, Father. Uh, we just thank you uh, tonight, um, this afternoon. And we bless your mighty name. And Father God, we see through the testimony of Jesus Christ that the world hated our Lord. We see that Barabbas was chosen over the Lord of glory who was a light of salvation. And yet men himself said, if we can have our hands around him just to kill the Lord of glory, we will surely do so. And in this generation and corruption, I do pray again for the body of believers, young and old here today, God, we can do effective damage spiritually if we get involved in this fight again. Let us be prayer warriors, God, and constantly be assaulting the, the, the gates of hell. Constantly come against all, all frustration, God, all evil that is in this world. I pray that we would frustrate the plans of Satan. Confuse and bind every strategy of evil, God. Every evil politician, we frustrate their plans. We bind them up, God. Let them be confused to not act out their evil intentions. And let the people of God prosper. We will wait on you, Lord, Father. Even though things may be difficult, you will bring deliverance to all those that love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, amen. God bless you all. Amen. Tonight at 630, and uh, we'll be a prayer at 6. Amen. God bless you.